So guys, in this video, I'm going to give you the five reasons as to why most people never lose the fat and get lean. Okay. And it took me years to figure out how to lose the belly fat and get lean. And now that I know what to do, not only is it much easier, but I get results much quicker. I'm going to give you the five things that you don't want to do, uh, what you should do instead. And also as a bonus, I'll give you two quick hacks that I do every single day to stay 10% body fat year round because there's nothing worse than getting in great shape and then losing that condition and then looking at old photos of yourself where you're in great condition and now you're a chubby mess again. I don't want that to happen to you so that's why I'm making this video. Okay so point number one. So this is a very obvious one but it's, it's, it's one of the main ones is consistency. Okay do not rely on discipline alone. Okay I see a lot of advice online talking about how people oh you can't get lean it's just a discipline issue you just need to learn how to say no i disagree with that for some people maybe but for most people it's not a discipline issue it's a skill issue and if you have the right knowledge and you know what to do and you have confidence in the plan which i'm going to talk about in point number two okay then it's going to be much easier for you to make the right decisions okay so we've got to get your mind prepared for what you're about to embark on okay and it's a bit like a car journey okay if you're going on a long haul road trip in the car you want to make sure your car is fit for the journey right so you're going to check the tires make sure the tires are fine and make sure there's no warning lights on make sure you got fuel check the oil and make sure the windscreen wipers work you know you want to check all the car just to make sure everything's in a good state before you set off on this trip and it's the same if you are starting this fat loss journey as well. We want to make sure your head's in the right place. We want to make sure you've got realistic expectations. We want to make sure that you're not uh, expecting to results too fast, too quickly. So then you're going to get disappointed and uh, you're going to eventually quit because you feel like you're not seeing results. And um, we want to make sure uh, you know, you've just got a strategy in place to help you get to where you want to go. Okay, So consistency is one of the biggest things that people struggle with. Um, a lot of people, like I said, they go fast too, too fast too quickly, it's not sustainable and other people simply quit before they see results because they're not doing the right actions. Which brings me on to point number two is you have, they don't have a strategy or they lack the knowledge. Okay, So a lot of people decide, oh okay, uh, you know, I'm going to get in shape, I'm going to lose weight, so I'm just going to go to the gym, but they don't have a plan, they just go to the gym and do cardio and do whatever weights they feel like it. I know because I've been there myself. Okay, and you know, with regards to their new nutrition, they're not tracking anything. Uh, you know, they're just winging it. They just know, okay, I can't have pizza anymore. Uh, I'm gonna have uh, this healthy thing instead, which says healthy on the label. You know, they don't really have a plan in place. They just know I need to exercise more and eat less. And I guarantee, if if that is the depth of that your plan. Uh, you're, you're not going to go very far. Okay, so what can you do? Well, first of all, watch my videos. Okay, it's free. It costs nothing. It costs a little bit of your time, uh, but it doesn't cost anything financially. Gain the required knowledge you need, and then you will be able to uh, put together a plan which makes sense. If you want to go to the next step, I've got a course, an online course, which will teach you how to do this yourself, how to put a plan in place, how to correctly assess where you are right now, where you want to be, and what steps you need to take to get there. And if that sounds like too much work, I do coaching. Uh, you can apply to work with me, with me one on one, and I will do absolutely everything for you from A to Z. That's the uh, the easiest option. But really, what you want to make sure with this is that you have clarity, okay? Because if you don't have clarity, you will second guess yourself. Like, should I eat this thing? Should I eat that thing? Should I do this workout? Should I do that workout? And what that does, it just creates fatigue. It creates decision fatigue to the point you just get burnt out and you're just like, oh, just give me the pizza and the ice cream. It's easy. And you fall back to your default state. Okay. If you have clarity and if you have 100% com confidence and conviction in the plan. So whenever I work with a client, I always explain why, you know, um, why are we doing this? You know, what is the plan? This is the plan for the next week. We might go another week like this, or we might make some weekly adjustments, etc., etc., etc. And that's how, uh, you know, if if you have a hundred percent conviction in the plan, uh, and you don't, and you stick to it, then you're going to get results. Okay. So, 
Point number three is making emotional decisions, not logical decisions. This is not just about food, uh, although that is a big part of it, like emotional eating and stuff like that. But not only that, it's about making changes to your plan. So say if you set off, uh, you, you set off, um, you start your plan and you feel like you're not making any progress. So you decide to make some changes. And what can happen is, I see this all the time, is people make too many changes too quickly. You need to give yourself a bit of time to actually see how the plan is playing out. Is the strategy working or not? But you also need to make data-driven decisions, okay? So what can you do? Well, you have to be tracking, okay? And the big three things you need to track is your food. You need to know how much protein uh, you're consuming per day, per day uh, your macros, your calories. We need to know calories that you're consuming every single day because we're gonna, we need to be in a deficit to, to lose weight, okay? So food is critical. Weight is number two. We have to be checking your weight every single morning. When you wake up, after you've been to the toilet, before you drink anything, weigh yourself, okay? And point number three is photos because the scale never tells the full picture. So every single week, same time, same place, in natural light, take progress photos, front, side, back, okay? And if we have this data in front of us and we go through a week of following the plan and at the end of the week we can assess, are we on track? Are we going in the right direction? Do we need to make some adjustments? And we're making decisions based off data rather than off our emotions. And this is another um, advantage of hiring a coach is, you know, they're not going to be emotional, whereas you are, because it's your body and it's how you look, whereas they're going to have an outside perspective and they're going to be able to make a rational, logical decision based on the numbers and based on the facts, okay? That's point number three. Point number four is creating a deficit just from food. What do I mean by this? Well, uh, obviously, you know, for fat loss to occur, we need to burn more calories than we consume. Okay, and there's two ways we can increase, uh, there's two ways we can create a deficit, okay? We can either reduce our calories um, and just move the same amount, or what we can do is we can keep our calories the same and just increase our movement throughout the day. But the problem is that they're not equal, okay? It's much better to move more than it is to reduce your calories more because long-term, you give yourself more room to play with. If you increase your movement, your calories are still high. So we can still pull down these calories. But this calorie number, it's like a finite number. So once, you, as a man, once you get down to like, I don't know, two, it's different, depends how big you are, but like 2,000 calories or like 1,800 if you're quite a light guy, if you're getting down to that amount of calories, okay, you can't pull them down any further and it's gonna get really difficult and you're gonna run yourself into the ground. Whereas if you start off your cut uh, or you start off your fat loss phase and you keep your calories where they are, but you just decide to do, uh, you know, six or 8,000 more steps in a day, well, you've created a deficit by moving more and that's so much more, that, that's better in my opinion than just pulling from your calories alone. Eventually, we might need to pull from the calories, but we wanna keep the calories as high as possible for as long as possible, because at some point we are gonna to need to pull from that, and we wanna do that later on than earlier on, okay? And point number five is poor quality sleep, okay? I could not not talk about this. It's super, super critical because the worse your sleep is, the higher your stress levels are, the higher your cortisol, is and the more your body just wants to hold on to that body fat because it's in a stressed state it thinks oh i need to preserve resources because it's a stressful time and i'm going to need these resources so what it's doing is holding on to food like body fat in, in, in the way your body looks at fat it's just food stores okay so it's holding on to extra food because it perceives as a stressful event going on so we obviously want to fix your sleep and get your sleep not only sleeping uh, longer but also improving the quality of your sleep so how can we do that well you can get an aura ring which is really going to help this or a whoop or ultra human this is a sleep tracker it's going to give you data driven decisions based on actions that you take and how it affects your sleep but there's a lot of things that you can do for free to uh, improve your sleep go to bed 
at the same time every single night, wake up at the same time every single night. When you wake up in the morning, go outside, view natural sunlight. You want to be outside for you know 20 minutes, 30 minutes, as long as possible. Get a lot of natural daylight into your eyes. That's going to kickstart your circadian rhythm. Uh, avoid blue light at night. Avoid uh, being on your phone. Um, what else? Uh, get the room nice and dark, nice and cool. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things you can do for your sleep which cost nothing. Uh, and some of these are actually discipline. You know, a lot of the time, good sleep comes down to discipline and just having the discipline to go to bed at the same time every night. Okay, so they are the five things that prevent people from getting lean and losing the belly fat. Now on to the two quick hacks that I've developed over the years. Okay, so hack number one is for each meal, and at the moment I just eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay, so for each meal, for breakfast, for lunch, and dinner, I basically have three to five go-to meals that I just pick from one of them. Sometimes I will eat just the exact same thing every single day, but I know for a lot of you, uh, you'll need a little bit more variety. So what you can do is you can say have five breakfasts, five lunches, and five dinners. And for all of these meals, you've already made them before, you already know how to make them, you, they're already your favorite foods, but you've already tracked them, so you already know the calories and the macros, and you can save them in your app, which by the way, I use uh, Macro Factor, uh, it's a good app. You can create your own recipes on there, or your own foods, so you can have them on there, and it just makes it super easy to track. And also, you're, you're removing decision fatigue. It's not like, oh, what should I have for lunch today? It's like, okay, I got five lunches to choose from. I had this one yesterday, so I'm not going to have that one. I'm probably going to have that one tomorrow, so you know, let's choose this one. Okay, So get yourself five breakfasts, five lunches, five dinners to choose from. They've already tracked. You've already worked out the calories and the macros. And then you just reduce decision fatigue, and you're going to make it so much easier for you to actually stick to uh, stick to the plan, right? That's the first hack. The second hack is to microdose exercise throughout the day, okay? So what I do right now is I'll go for a beach walk in the morning. Sometimes I'll go for a beach walk in the evening as well, or I'll be around sunset time. Um, whenever I'm on a call, uh, I might walk around like here or walk around in the garden. Uh, if I'm waiting for like something to cook and I'm just doing nothing, I might do some dips on the kitchen counter. Like I'm just looking for opportunities throughout the day to just walk around and to get some extra movement in. And if you just do this once in your day, okay, it might not be a big deal. But if there's 10 moments in your day where you get more movement, well, that's over a week and over a month, that's going to add up to a significant amount more of activity. Okay, because a lot of people, and at least for myself, you know, when I was younger, I used to have the one hour period where I go to the gym. But for the other 23 hours of the day, I was pretty much sedentary. I wasn't doing much whatsoever. And it's going to be very hard for you to get lean if you just have one hour of scheduled exercise per day when you're probably in the gym and just lifting weights, which, you know, is not the best for fat loss anyway and the 23 hours of the day where you're uh, not doing anything. So if you're not doing any steps right now, the best time to get steps in will be after a meal. A 10 minute minimum 10 minute walk after a meal is going to aid digestion and that's going to help your body use the nutrients that you've just consumed to actually fuel your workouts, uh, fuel your muscles and not get turned to fat, guys. Okay, so that's it. There are the five tips, uh, the two hacks uh, the last thing that I want to say is if you're struggling right now to lose fat and get lean, do not give up. It is possible, like I mentioned at the start, it's, it's likely it's not a discipline issue, it's a skill issue. Okay, You just need to get the correct skills and get the correct knowledge so you know exactly what you need to do because if you put in the right actions for a long enough time period, you will get the right result. It's impossible for you to do the right actions for a long enough time period and for, for you to not get the desired result that you want. If you want any help with this, uh, the links are down below, my course, my coaching, everything like that. I would love to work with you one-on-one -on -one to help you hit your fitness goals. Other than that, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Get that belly fat off, get lean, and I'll see you in the next one.